I mean, really what used to differentiate carp that you really wanted to catch over others was their size. And in a day now where there's loads of big ones, there's got to be a little bit more to it than that, i.e. the looks and the character of some of these carp and, and the environment they live in. And this lake ticked all those boxes for me. Now the fishing on there, sort of last May into June, was a real unique bit of fishing in, in as much as it was quiet. I was able to angle on my terms, bait areas, watch, look, react to what I saw. It, it was really pretty special and it culminated in catching some really lovely carp, including the lake's big one known as uh, One Eye. Often a natural progression from catching the big one in the lake is that you move on, and, and I sort of did that. Um, it, it was hard to, but I had some tickets elsewhere and, and fished out the summer into the autumn on back on the Woolpack, which I was successful there. It sort of, you know, it was one of those years where everything sort of fell into place and um, I couldn't put a foot wrong. It was a period in my angling that I'll never forget. Anyway, so I went on to, to pit seven, with the end goal really being trying to catch the, the, the big, slopey headed pit seven linear, um, steeped in history, it's been about forever. One sort of real atmospheric, rainy August morning, it all came good there, and which sort of, uh, again, it's a natural sort of progression to move on from there, and, and I did that, and I like that in my fishing. I don't like to try to, to sort of linger too long on a lake, I like to, to, to have intense sort of periods. Um, I don't flip, don't get me wrong, I don't flip, but I like, to, I like to have a six, eight, 10 week intense period on a lake. I really enjoy that. And this was, this was sort of coming good and a little bit too quickly, if I'm honest, caught, caught the sort of the one, the sort of the main prize in the lake. So after that year, um, that left me a, a winter to fish on a quiet pit, local to home. Um, it, was, it was quite convenient, there was a couple of nice ones in there to go at. I sort of wanted to be there and, and, and really sort of think about where I wanted to, to be for the coming year. Now I've usually got a bit of a plan and all my angling revolves around a plan on where I want to fish and how I'm going to approach that. And I didn't have that, I, I had a few sort of maybes, uh, but nothing, nothing's concrete. All the while there was niggling in the back of my head was, um, this pit I'd fished last year up north of Cambridgeshire just suited my, the, the way I like to angle. Um, and coming towards the end of that winter, that pit had started to get a little bit busy and it was only small and, and you were getting hemmed in a bit and I'd sort of had enough of that, do you know what I mean? And, and I was desperate to, to get somewhere that was quiet again, especially for the spring where places naturally get more busy. And there was only one place I was going. Now, I'd caught the big one from this particular lake the year before and often the natural progression is to move on and I, and I did that but that place was niggling away at me all, it, 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 all that time. There were two, three, four backup carp if you like, maybe not as big but equally as special if not more than the big one and, and that was reason enough to go back and the more I thought about it and the more I sort of psyched myself into it I was I was more than up for it and um, the challenge was afoot. There was a slopey headed linear, um, not sin, not caught for a couple of three years. Almost, I mean, when, when us lads get together and we're talking about the big ones like you do, um, that one don't even get mentioned much, like it was sort of almost forgotten about. There was one with a, like a, a folded tail, quite an upfront fish, that one maybe not out in two, three years. There was a big fat plump one named, known as Liam's, again, one or two captures, I think, in five or six years. I mean, that in itself make, makes makes carp special, doesn't it? But you know how much, how little they're caught. But to look at these fish are really are something else. Now to have carp with that pedigree uh, and and those incredible looks, as rarely caught as those ones, 
it, it, it made this a real, real special proposition, you know, and um, I was so glad to be able to have access to this, this lake. It, it really was a special bit of fishing. So come early March, that was where I was headed. I remember the first day I went down, I did a lap, did a bit of lead in. I, what, do you know what? It was really quite bleak and I wasn't feeling it. And I, I traveled all that way, two hours, 100 odd miles or whatever. Um, spent the day looking, did a bit of lead in. I, I didn't even get all my kit out, to be honest. I just wasn't feeling it. I just wasn't feeling it. And you might think it mad, but I ended up heading home and, and came back the next week. Again, it, it looked really pretty bleak. I walked and walked and it was getting on for, for dark in the end, like maybe sort of four or five o'clock. Um, I was sat in a swim that, that was polar opposite end of where they'd first woken up and got caught from the year before. It was like in the other side of the lake, right down the bottom end. It was in the lee of the wind. And I, I remember sitting there, um, quite damp, drizzly, um, late afternoon, bleak as you like. And I just see a, like a row of bubbles. So I've gone from sort of feeling quite flat and, um, and unenthused, if you like, to just like, wow, like I've got to go get the kit from the van. It was on, do you know what I mean? Now to put that into some sort of a perspective, these fish, they don't show a lot. Um, and even when they do, there can be subtlest of shows, like just a little, tiny little head poke with sort of next to no wake or rings. Um, not always loads of fizzing either. Certainly that time of year, you're not gonna be seeing a lot. Um, so this little row of bubbles that I saw, I almost doubted myself like you do at that time of year when um, signs are so thin on the ground. But like, I just knew, do you know what I mean? I just knew that was carp. Um, up in the water or whatever, um, probably readjusting their depth at that time of day. So it was a, it was a simple case of, um, I got three single hook baits out there, um, fishing for drops on chod rigs. And the next morning, like I could, all, I could barely believe it when one of the rods is away and ended up catching like a, a mid upper, upper 20 mirror, real black thing, beautiful carp. I didn't really get to enjoy it that much. I was just completely like, sort of worried that someone was gonna catch me in the act, you know, like the lake was quiet. Just that, that, that early spring period when the last thing you want is like a capture getting out. So I did a few self takes, got her back, real fat, dark, um, beautiful overslung, clean mouth, proper carp. And yeah, got her back and like I hadn't been caught and put everything away, hid all the gear and um, yeah, that was it. And that sort of like set the tone really for, for the, how I was going to angle for the rest of that spring and, um, and keeping things under my hat, you know? Um, I was keen to do that. Sometimes it's not, it's not always the one, but on here, wh with the lakes, what I will say is with the lakes, there's a couple on the ticket. This one is always known for maybe waking up a bit earlier than the other. So there'll be two or three, four, whatever lads that, that flit. Now, with all, all due respect, I didn't want um, my hard work and the lake getting busier off the back of my captures. So I moved mountains to make sure things were kept quiet to protect my fishing. And, and I mean, the lake is a long way from home and I have to go to great effort um, in, in my fishing and to get there and, and readjusting work and home life and commitments and all that sort of thing. So I was gonna protect my fishing at all costs and I was well up for that. As I say, that first capture really did fire me up. You know what it's like when you get up that extra hour early, you know what I mean? And, um, and st stay at, set your alarm and get up through the night and actually get up rather than just wake up and turn it off. Um, and that was me, I was really was, it was, a, it was a fresh start. It was, you know, brand new spring with, with a real special carp under my belt already. And that's a dangerous place to be, you know? You're a dangerous angler when, when you're really fired up like that. And, and I really like to try and be there in that position if I can. I really enjoy my fishing, um, really work hard at it. And um, often the, you, you get results off the back of it. What I would like to do is, it, being as the pit was quite quiet and it, well, it's not the snaggiest of pits, I was fishing one end and you can't see left and right of you that because it's quite a long, thin lake. So in the mornings, I'd take a tea kit round uh, onto the end of the lake and watch from there, you get some real good vantage point. Now, it was really muddy around that side and um, carrying kit round was, was always a bit of a ball lake and walking around, I was doing lots of laps, 
it, the smallest of signs was, was absolute gold. Now I was sat round there one morning, um, I remember Dan being with me and we were both sat round there having a coffee and I'd get a bite and I had to, to trot the 50 or 60 yards back round the corner to the rod and like, it was obviously a big fish and um, like, it took me sort of a big, big long kite and he was up in the water, big golden mirror, you know, and uh, in the end got it in and it was, it was a, an old friend, the, the big one that I'd caught last year, One Eye which was unfortunate really because I you know recaptures aren't ideal and I really I really it's a real sort of um bit of a buzzkill really but um yeah she, she proper special old carp um old so we 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 did we got her on the mat treated her um and let her go sort of no worse for wear you know but um I was onto something I was fishing an area I'd had two or three four bites from this little bit of Bit of the lake and um, it was a real good starting point. I really was enjoying my fishing. The sort of style I like to, to fish is, especially at that time of year when you were sort of reacting off signs and and whatnot, I, I like to get around the pit but it, it did, it all seemed to be going off in, in this one area of the lake and I had three sort of areas, I was getting bites sort of by now because as we're going into sort of late March, early April, I was getting bites on all three rods. Um, it was a real, almost like summer fishing over bait, do you know what I mean? Um, where, where it was sort of, you could sort of set your clock by, I was going to get a bite, which is rare for spring. Often it's a, it's a bouncing about thing, isn't it? And, um, but, but they see, kept seem, seeming to come to this, this one particular bit. I was baiting when I was leaving. It started off as single hook baits then maybe a pouch full or two. I was up in it now, I was, I was sort of fishing over maybe half a kilo. Good, I used to go out in, a, in, in my little boat. I used to get, cast my rods and I'd get, or, or, or I'd even I'd got used to putting a marker out um, to my clip and then going out in my boat, just 20 yards or so, just enough in a, in a strong wind, be able to get um, half a kilo or so, a, a 12 millers out around, around the float and around the back of the float, not tight but just a, the, the old float was a good point, point of reference to where I was putting my fishing rod, like, you know? And, um, and I'd repeat that on all three rods. And over the course of five or six weeks, I, I caught some real special fish from that, that area. There were one or two fish that really stood out. Um, one being a real long black 29 pounder, few scales along its flank, but you didn't know where the scale started and its, and its skin was, you know, it was so black. I'd sacked him up one morning for Dan to come down and, and photograph and film and whatnot. <sighs> Spring's been a long time in coming, but it feels like it's finally here. First of a couple from this morning. black long 29 in a sack and, and one of the other rods went and, and while Dan was en route I, I had, so I had another chocolatey brown sort of mid 20 mirror which you know as you think just a mid 20 mirror but this, this thing was like proper got me buzzing you know real mega carp big overslung clean mouth leathery flank not quite as dark as the other one but both unique proper carp and exactly the reason I'd come back to fish this lake. By now we're, we're in sort of early April and I was catching, I was ticking one or two off a, a week, some real nice ones, not seeing loads, but, but just getting the odd bite here and there and catching some real nice carp. And Easter bank holiday weekend, things really started to come together. The makeup of the lake, you, you almost, you always sort of felt like you were missing out on something elsewhere. Like you couldn't always see the other side. 
um, and even like down to your left and right. Um, unless you stood on the ends of the lake, you weren't seeing that. I wasn't happy to be sat where I was. I was, ca I was catching a few, but I knew things were gonna change and you know, eventually other areas would come into play. Uh, and I was keen not to miss out on that. So every given opportunity, I'd be, I'd be elsewhere looking and, and trickling a bit of bait in. You, when, when a lake is so quiet, it, you, you almost feel like you've got to do more. You can't be just sat in, sat in your swim waiting for it to happen. There were gonna be chances to, to, to be made almost and, and engineered. God, I was constantly looking for that um, and pushing for that to happen because that, that area I, I was fishing in had a time frame to it and I, I knew that was, that was soon run out. Up until now, I, I wasn't really seeing many shows. I mean, often the only carp I'd see would be the ones I was catching, do you know what I mean, in the bottom of the net. However, that Easter weekend trip, something was just different. Um, I turned up, I got the kit round into the swim. Didn't have loads of light left, maybe a couple of hours, but um, got the kit, sort of set the rods up and everything in, um, tied some, like my chod sections and hook baits on and all that stuff. But again, that, going back to that, always feel like you're missing out. I couldn't just set up and without doing laps, a couple of laps and having a good look, just for, my, my head, you know what I mean? But um, So I did that, I did just that, did a couple of laps, took too long doing so, and before I knew it, I was I was in a, a bit of a race against time for the light. All the while, while I'm scurrying about rushing to, with just, just on my bed, no shelter up yet, I remember seeing a show just off the corner of the island. Up until now, I hadn't been seeing shows, and I'd baited pretty heavy the week before for that, certainly for that time of year, quite heavy for me. Uh, and this fish was just off the back of that bait, and like, I could not get those rods out quick enough um, and, and luckily they went sweet. Early hours of the morning, sure enough, that, that right hander behind which I'd seen that show the, the evening before, that, that rod was away and I managed a mega old 34, 34 pound mirror with a big single scale one side and a floppy tail, um, real dark one. Mega start to, to like this bank holiday weekend. A little bit later that day, an old mate of mine, Liam, that we used to fish alongside each other on a, another pit in Cambridgeshire, he turned up to fish and first thing he did was sling me a Thatcher's and we had a few beers together and he, he set up up the other end and between, I, I remember him catching one and I caught a couple more and it was, it was turning into a lovely old trip, you know. I don't know quite who, whose idea it was, but that next day we, we went up the pub for a bit of dinner and a couple of beers and and that was what it was all about, you know. The fishing up there was just lovely and it, there wasn't loads of socialising. Um, it was quite quiet, but, but that particular weekend with it being Easter and that, it was rude not to, you know. I ended up catching eight, eight fish that trip, which was uh, completely unheard of for me on there. A real red letter trip culminating in uh, the last one of the trip. Lovely chocolatey brown, mid 30, that, that um, Jim Wilson had caught like a uh, free, free four years or something beforehand, not caught in between time. Sort of again, like one that you sort of forget about, but a real special carp. And things were building, like it was, it, it started out as just a, like a real nice bit of fishing um, with no massive end goal as such, just a nice bit of quiet fishing, but things were coming together and getting a little bit more serious in my head. I really felt close to, to catching one of those real special old ones that perhaps hadn't been caught for a few years and it's a little bit forgotten about, but proper, proper carp. My fishing up to this point um, had been real simple, just, you know, fishing chod rigs with krill cork ball pop-ups um, over krill boilies, you know, just exactly how I like to fish, give, given the opportunity. As we were getting into April, things had started to dry up a little bit up at the end I was fishing. Uh, but, but not f just for that reason, I was starting to see more fish using the other end, the other side of the lake, up the other end, sort of the polar opposite, if you like, from where I was fishing. Uh, and I was keen to start doing a bit up there. Um, I'd started trickling a bit of bait in. and remember being up fishing up that end on the end of a cold wind for a weekend. I'd caught one real, real soon after getting in there and I really thought I was onto a few and it wasn't to be. I did see a real good one go over out to my left just as I thought about moving for my final night. Uh, but I hung it out in the hope of catching one of them big ones, but um, nev never quite happened. But that really got the old brain going and um, I was really so sort of keen to start doing a little bit up there. Um, I'd caught a few good fish from there 
the year before and that was sort of May time. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I baited that area and had a bit of a lead about before I left. And again, like I say, I was keen to start, start doing a bit of fishing up that end. Now this particular swim I'm talking about is sort of on a point at one end, almost on the gap. So you, you can sort of fish out into to both sides of the lake. And, and you'd think that you, or most people even say, oh yeah, you get a great view from there. And I don't think you do, you know, you, you, don't, you see a lot of water, but the, 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 the prime water that you need to be looking at, often the island margins either side, you can't see because the island's so in front of you, you know. Um, that coupled with the fact that one of the main areas I like to fish to is a real gnarly old snag out to the left. So uh, trotting while you've got rods out and, and keeping an eye on other parts of the lake is out of the question, you know. So although it, it was polar opposite to the other end where I could flick rods out and go and get a vantage point to watch in the morning and the evenings and that, in this swim it was like it was all or nothing. You either had rods out and you were like camped on your butt rip, butts or, or, or you weren't. I sort of had a swim either end of the lake um, that I, I could sort of bounce between both areas, good, good areas. Um, I'd, I'd caught a few, well, good few from down one end, that, but I'd, I'd newly started fishing the point and I'd caught a couple. Now, there was one, one particular afternoon where I see a real big dark one just head and shoulder in the waves down to my left. Didn't have a rod in that area so um, I was sure to I sort of put one there that afternoon um, and a couple of chucks of a lead and then I got a real nice slightly deeper couple of foot deeper drop. That was the one I quickly clipped it clipped it up put that rod out there followed by a few pouchfuls of bait and I was well hopeful. What I will say is by by this point I really had it in my head as as that that point area was, was the area for one of them good uns. I just, I just had a gut feeling um, and I know now to go, you know, to, to go with my gut. Often, you know, often it's right. Anyway, I, that next morning I get a slow bite on, on that particular rod. That, that, was, that was my favourite of the three, I remember that. It was just something about that drop and the area of the lake, plus seeing that big un show there. Started playing a fish, quite an innocuous fight then started taking some line from me, sort of really quite flat rodded me and big, heavy, powerful fish in my head anyway. Um, and flipping the hook pulled, that's unheard of. I, I get so few hook pulls, especially on them jod, jod rigs and size fours, do you know what I mean? I, they don't come off and I was flipping sick, do you know what I mean? I, I really thought that was like chance gone, that was it. That was all that spring in that, in that moment for me, that, that was my chance. And, it had gone and I remember being devastated. Next morning sort of packed up and baited the area quite heavy. Um, I, I know that the Tufties were getting a lot of the bait so I was sure to break some of it up and, and sort of sew it left and right of the, of the spots, not all, not all dumped on one tight spot and dust myself off and I'd be back next week. The next week came around and um, I was back up that point end there was a northerly blowing as it did like pretty much all of the spring. Um, it really did look the one down there and set up. Set up, I'd actually, do you know what? I'd done my first night up the other end of the pit um, simply because I was a bit, a bit of a um, quandary as to, I, I didn't know which swim to go in. And anyway, I'd seen one show off the corner of the island down the other end. So I did my first night down there. I was in sort of two minds as to, to move. I remember actually, I'd been stood up the point end I'd seen one show and thought like I'd, I'd miss, m messed up there. I should have done my first night up there. I was walking back down to the rods and as I was about 50 yards away from the rods, one of them had gone and um, I ended up catching like a um, low 20 mirror, a real nice one. And that, that really put me as to like, oh, what, what to do? Do you know what I mean? The lake would, would be, it was Friday morning now. There'd be a few anglers or the odd, maybe one or two anglers turning up, whatever. Um, and I, it was decision time, I had to make a decision. And I did, I made a decision to wrap up and move up the other end. By this time, like I say, I'd, I had it in my head that that point area would be, would be the one for them sort of bigger, older, sort of rarer carp. That, you know, I'd been, up to now, I'd been catching quite a few of the smaller ones. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd caught a few 30 pounders, but um, I just felt that point area was the one for them big ones. And um, so it proved this, this, this particular trip, I, I ended up catching, I think, another three carp. I had a 35 pound mirror, 
big angry one it was, really rucked, towed me all around the place. And actually, in fact, <laughs> The, where where this, this point situated on, there's a little gap where they can pass through into one lake into the other. Um, I'd had him on for like five, six, seven minutes or whatever out one side, and it's towed me through this gap. There was nothing I could do with it, you know. Um, and all, I had my Polaroids on, I could see this, this good mirror like towing me through the gap. Um, yeah, anyway, got, got him in, and he was like, he was 35, 35, 8, if I remember rightly, and um, real cool one. The next one, um, just before, just like sort of on last light, um, 29 pound if I remember rightly, real dark. Um, I had my dog with me that trip, little Lily, and um, she was sort of, I think she was in the shots and whatnot. She loves to come with me, but um, she was getting wet through and uh, like it was, it really was, it was drizzly, sort of real dark evening and, and I'd caught that one real at a, at a, probably at, the, at a bad time really, but um, Lovely carp, all the same, one I'd not seen before. Um, we, we call those, between a few of us, we call them the Bournevilles, you know, all, they all seem to be peas in a pod and often around like sort of upper 20, low 30 mark, but proper, proper special carp, you know. We slipped that one back, redid the rod just in time, just, just before dark and um, that next morning, that Sunday morning, I was due to go home and I'd caught a couple of like the rarer, rarer sort of bigger and better ones for the lake if you like and I, I remember hanging the, hanging the morning out in, in the hope of another one by now my, it, my, my mindset if you like was that that's where I needed to be that swim was where I needed to be for for those one of those last few big ones um, and so it proved when like like just out of bite time really probably mid-morning 11 o'clock something like that um, the snag rod's gone and I played in um, just a real ploddy fight, I just sort of pumped it in, but um, it was, um, if I remember rightly, 29, 10 or something common. It hadn't been out again for two or three years, something like that. Um, real deep bodied one, I think they call the bream maybe, but um, pucker common and um, another one of them old ones off the list. We're mid-April now, and I really feel close. <laughs> I've ticked off most of them now, with one or two left to go, including the, the one I really want. But um, this will do for a consolation, I tell you. By now, I felt I'd caught most of the carp in the lake. I was starting to think, you know, what have I got to do to put one of these last few fish on the bank? Um, I was getting a, a fair few repeats. So that, coupled with the fact that, um, what I would say is like um, Dan, like Dan Wildball, the cameraman, he, he'd been following a lot of the fishing on there, but he, he, he was, he'd also been fishing the lake. And um, anyway, this particular week, like when I, I wasn't there, I was at home, but. Um, I got the call to say he'd caught one of them real special ones that we all wanted. Um, what I get, it was one that we'd sort of, sort of forgotten about a bit, um, hadn't been caught in two or three years. We called, we, we called it amongst ourselves the slopey headed linear. A very unique, very, very special carp and, and rightly so, he was absolutely ecstatic like on the phone, like, he, oh, I think I've got it mate, I think I've got it, I remember him saying. And, and he, he was rightly, and he rightly deserved it as well. It was, uh, it was great for him. I was naturally a little bit disappointed. Disappointed also not to, to have even been there to see it and, and photo it for him, you know. But, um, but that, that's fishing and like every dog has their day and that, that's what makes it so great, isn't it? I was back, whatever, like I was back next week. But I was back in the point. Um, I remember this particular, fi uh, this particular trip, um, 
everything is, was on the change real quick, like it does in that, that early May, sort of late April, early May time. And that swim had changed, there was bits of weed hitting the surface where there hadn't been the week before. I'd sit, and that the fish were much more active, like I'd seen a few cruising, which I hadn't really seen all spring. Um, they were, and then one would come through the edge and I'd see a show out, open water, then that evening a couple showed off the snag, it was like going off, do you know what I mean? And so that capture that Dan had caught of the slope-headed linear, that had completely put to the back of my head, you know, like it was on, do you know what I mean? And I was, I was, I was well up for this trip and it, it, it started off, at, I can't remember exactly what, but it, I was just, in my head it was going off this trip and 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 there was reason to be upbeat i mean there was there was two or three of the known real good uns that hadn't been caught this spring and they were they were well in the game you know the moment i stepped on the lake i knew I, it was the right decision to, to to go and um again like there was one angler already on liam had just got down he was setting up one end i've shot down to the point started setting up and the fish were active. I, in fact, I remember going, walking around to the other side and I see a big group of like 10 fish come through a snag um, under my feet. Then as I came back around to the swim, one has gone through the gap in front of me. By now I'd sort of set up and got rods out and that evening like a couple had showed out to the left, one out to the right, see a couple show off the snag, like it was going on. It was a new moon that night um, and I've gone to bed full of hope. Um, uh, a real bit of a um, bit of a buzz buzz about the night, if I remember rightly, and the early hours, just just in twilight that morning, um, I got a bite on one of the. It was the rod out to the right on the new area, actually. Played in like, uh, got, well, I, I couldn't see a great deal of the fight because of the light, but um, into the net went. Obviously, a good fish, and I got the old head torch on the fish, and like. Couldn't sort of tell which fish it was, you know. By now, I had a pretty good idea of the stock and whatnot, but this was obviously a big one, like a mid upper 30 uh, mirror. But um, anyway, she, she went into a sack and, um, and Tom came down to, to photo her. And I took a picture on the mat and I'd studied some of the pictures. Um, it was one, again, it was another one that we'd sort of like forgotten about. Big up front fish with a sort of a floppy old tail. Proper, proper like unique carp. Anyway, yeah, Tom, Tom got down and like I rolled the sack up in the edge and brought her over to the mat and um, unzipped it and like, yeah, mate, this, <laughs> this fish was wicked and yeah, incredible. And we were both rightly blown away with like one of the real gems of the lake. Uh, you know, 36 and a half, if I remember rightly. Not like a massive fish by today's standards, but without putting too much num numbers and stats and figures and pounds and ounces on these fish, like they, these are special, special carp. They're old carp, and to me, you know, this is exactly why I was putting all this effort in and doing all this traveling and, and taking time off work and, and fishing my heart out for, for, for this, for this moment. I was struggling to take it in, if I'm honest, like for, it was, it was a proper, proper old carp and like by far and away the highlight of my spring. So I, with the highlight of, of my spring so far, that, that trip, um, I baited heavily when I left. In, in my head, like my spring was made, but um, they still hadn't spawned. There was a few weeks away yet. For me, uh, the slopey headed linear that Dan had caught, that was out of the game. It was such a rare carp anyway. That had been caught a fortnight or so ago. I'd just caught that 36 pounder, which left it only Liam's. Uh, to go for, which again is a rare, rare as rocking, rocking all 
carp. Like it done, it done one capture in three years or two captures in five or six years or something. Anyway, I still, uh, it, was all to, it was all to play for still and I was enjoying my fishing. If nothing else, like the fishing and, and, and some of the others you catch along the way, were, it was great. So um, I got back the next week. Now, this next Thursday I turned up and um, I've, got, I've walked onto the point and all out to the right of the point was just big like froth. It was just all froth out, and they hadn't really been getting in that area. It's quite shallow. Um, they do like it in that area, but so far that spring they hadn't used it. Now I'd walked onto the point, seen that, sort of thought nothing of it because it had all been out to the left so far, but um, Put, put my kit down, um, walked round to the right, and uh, I'd never seen anything like it on that lake in any any area of the lake, but like it all, all was all chocolate and my eyes were just adjusting, and I've just seen like this herd of them come through. It was like, as one fish was going, the end of one was going, the start of another one was appearing, and I sort of stood there up against the tree, and I've even got, I've got some film on my, my, my phone of it, I remember sending it to my mate Joe. Oh God, right, that's the point, just there. Caught one out here the other week, but they're in here. F chunks, mate, right in the edge. And all There's one. And I'm looking at one now, it's huge. Oh my God, I'm going to go get my kit. Game on, boy. But, um, like, that were, and they were good ones, mate. They was all good ones. Um, like big, big fish, like, and there's not loads of big fish in this lake, so I to, must have just seen like six or seven of the better ones come through right at my feet, um, and then one's flopped out just up the margin, and wow, like it was, um, it was going off. And I remember I hadn't got any any food. I often don't get food on route to the lake because I mean, um, sort of waste ten minutes, don't you? So, so hell bent was I on trying to get the point area. Anyway, so I've got the got the sort of rods all set up and like rigs tied on and whatnot, and um, get, it gave me a bit of time to. I nipped up up the shop, got got some food and uh, milk and whatnot, and um, back in the swim. I remember getting a few beers as well. Actually, um, got got back and cracked one of them open and um, flicked the rods out. Now I had two out out to the left, and I was keen to put one out to the right. I had a little bit of a lead about with a one ounce lead, and found a nice sort of. Um, deeper, siltier channel, sort of halfway, which was was it wasn't sort of that they were sort of out to the right here. So this this area was perfect because it meant I could sort of lead and lead up and get bait out to the area without sort of spooking them too much in this area. But I'm sure they would come come past me. Well, early hours of the morning, that, that plan come good and um, got a bite on that rod. Played in what was a good fish. Um, Got it in the net, looked down, and I remember. So, so in my head, like that slopey headed linear is out of the game. So, so when I tell you, like, I looked into the net, and there is the slopey headed linear, like big, wide, dark. Right, I had to check it two or three times, like you do, you know, flick the head torch off, and then pull myself together, have another look, like, and um, yeah, it was it, all right. It was like the one that Dan had had three, three weeks ago. Um, not, not caught in two or three years and then caught twice in three weeks. Flipping, like, this was like incredible. I was like a kid, like, you know what it's like when you catch a big one and like, I'd gone to pieces a bit, but um, yeah, got her out, weighed her, um, sacked her and um, called Dan. I remember called both Dan and Tom. Dan was away in Exeter, so um, Tom was good, good and came down and um, like, we was like, both both blown away with her on the bank, like proper, proper old carp. And um, yeah, that was it. That was like, that really was my spring made now. It sort of, it, it was a good bit of fishing in the start and um, been catching a few along the way. But um, with my last two captures, like two proper special, special carp, she went 39.6 and um, a carp, you don't, you don't, you, you know, you won't have seen many shots of her. That for me, that makes these fish so much more special as well. They're not in the mags and like socials every other week. Do you know what I mean? And like you could have got an orange in its mouth, like big, clean as you like, overslung mouth, big, long, sloping head from down from its shoulders to its to the front of its mouth. Um, big old row of linear scales, like like its scales, like with flipping massive, like just like a unique, special, special old carp. And 
and exactly the reason um, why we do it, you know. Now I'd put loads into this intense bit of fishing this spring, pushing my luck with work, relationships, home life. You know, sometimes I, I even question it, you know, chasing these fish and everything you put into it. I'm obsessed, I'm completely obsessed with it. For me, in this moment, that's why, that is exactly why, and I had a little talk with myself about it. I even said, I, I remember saying to myself, this is exactly why I do it. Oh, you know, made up with her. What a carp, eh? Rare and as old as the hills. What a privilege. What a privilege. Made my year already, this has. Fine, fine carp. That's what it's all about. Made up.